Hello there, and welcome to Yusha's Call with yours truly, Myra Waiters. I welcome you with my whole heart. So happy to have you tune in, all of you believers in Yahusha Hamashiach. Uh, especially to you, Yahudis, I must be uh, 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 sure to mention you because, uh, and yes, we're lights. Um, that uh, we have uh, some information that we have to start gathering because Yah is gathering us together. And uh, we best do that with knowledge without which we perish. All right, we started uh, reading on the uh, program two uh, in Baruch. We were in chapter 12. Uh, we were we finished 12 and we moved into chapter 13. Uh, we had finished up to verse 3. I'm going to begin to read 4. Uh, but before I do, let me please explain something to you that I didn't put on the last program is that uh, this particular book uh, was written. It, it's, it's, it's kind of hidden. You have to kind of study it to see it. But this book uh, is written at a time when Yaudis are are being conquered, and they are being chastised of Yah. And along with the chastisement, the, the prophet he's grieving. He's like Jeremiah, the weeping prophet. Baruch is, is 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 very 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 deeply moved and saddened because of this judgment. And this judgment has to do with 70 A.D. This is when we, as a people, were scattered throughout Africa, and he is very, very distressed. But Yahua is dealing with him, sometimes directly, sometimes through his angel, or I should say his angel really is directly, uh, and letting him know not only does he have to do this, he tells us why he has to do this, and then he also lets the prophet know that he will not be involved in this, this mayhem that's about to take place. And... Uh, so you'll find on and off where, where the angel is speaking to him and, and consoling him, but yet still saying, listen, you better care more about Yahua than you do Zion. But right here on the 13th chapter, we're going to go to verse 4, and I'm going to read that. And uh, I wanted to let you know, too, the uh, meaning of hurricanes. You know, we're talking about all the horrible things that are coming on the face of this planet, on uh, that planet, Earth. Uh, and... One of the things that we learn is that we're in a uh, state of judgment. Not we now, we're coming out of uh, our judgment. We're coming out of our persecution and others are going in. See, Edom has to go in. Jacob's coming out, all right? Uh, I wanna read something I found. Uh, it was written in September or in a paper on September the 8th and it says, uh, you can probably see a little bit of it. It's just a woman here, a black, a black uh, Israelite, I believe, a Yehudi. And it's just a form of a huge woman with, with water for hair. And it's called uh, The Meaning of Hurricane, all right? And I wanted to read that because I thought that article was really fascinating from the Florida Sentinel. Uh, the true meaning of the hurricane, the spirit of the African woman who has been stolen, beaten, raped, murdered, and thrown overboard the slave ships en route hmm, to enslaved lands. This is why all hurricanes start at the same point of exodus of Africa, the post of the Atlantic slave trade, and hit every stop where slaves were sold all through the Caribbean and the American coast. Something to think about when you see the things that are coming upon this earth right now. And then, of course, I found another one, a completely different day. Um, um, I, well, maybe it was the same day. But anyway, I found this map. And I thought about where this huge hurricane uh, that, that uh, hit North and South Carolina. And I looked at this map. It saws the domestic slave trade, 1808 to 1865. I know you can't see it from here, but I just want to let you know I am looking at a map. Okay, yeah, there you go, a map. And if you have TVs or something, you can get kind of zero in on that, you know, whatever you have. All right, and what that was showing is all the ports where our, our people were brought to from the African West Coast 
uh, Barbary Coast, Diamond Coast, um, Di uh, what do you call it? Um, just West Africa, let's put it that way. And, it's, and we have places, New York, Washington, Baltimore, Richmond, Pittsburgh, Norwalk, uh, Salaberry, Wilmington, all of these are uh, inside states, New York and Charleston, North Carolina, Savannah, uh, Georgia, Montgomery, Pensacola, Florida, uh, St. Petersburg, Florida, Galveston, Texas, New Orleans. We know about New Orleans and go on and so on. Anyway, it's a map and tells you uh, the ports that were used during the slave trade. And if you look on your hurricanes and your worst storms, Mississippi, Georgia, Texas, Alabama, Florida, uh, Oklahoma, T Tennessee, Nashville, Knoxville, St. Louis, Frankfurt, and so on and so forth, you will see that, watch these in the next few years. I don't know if some of these ports on the, west, on the east coast will ever be the same again because of this hurricane season and coming even now without the season. They call it anomalies. But uh, like I told you before, anomalies will be the norm. All right? And you need to be aware of these things so you can see what's going on. And if you're not going to come out from among them, you're going to be judged with them. That goes for all of you believers in the Messiah. All of you. You need to stay on your knees. You need to pray. Be in touch with the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKadosh, because he will be speaking with you, speaking, and, and you need to get in a group of be like-minded believers and listen to his word, because he may have to tell you to get up and move. He may have to tell you, now don't listen. Don't try to do a mass exodus, but I'm just saying, if you <laughs> in a place, he'll protect you. But if he wants you to move, he'll tell you that too. Just listen to him. All right, I'm not telling everybody people to get up and move. Listen to the Spirit. All right, let's go back to our scripture in Baruch to Baruch, and we're in the fourth verse of the 13th chapter. It says, so that if ever those prosperous cities say, so now it's going to look at us because we have been the underdog, we have been, the, we've been chastised because of our stiff-necked disobedience, and now even in 70 A.D., or right prior to 70 A.D., the Messiah has come and gone. And now look at what's about to take place. So that if ever those prosperous cities say, why has Yahuwah brought upon us this retribution? Why did he do this to his own people? Why did we get cast out of our own place? Why do we have to go and be uh, uh, subject to all other nations? Here's what it says. This is the answer. Say unto them, you and those like you who shall have seen this evil, and retribution, which is coming upon you and upon your people in its destined time, that the nations may be thoroughly smitten. You know, it's a setup. You know, it's one thing about Yah. He has punished his own people for their disobedience. But in the interim, because he knows the wickedness of the hearts of the Edomites, he knows this. So what is he saying? What he's saying is, even though I'm chastising my people, it's a setup also for you because I know what you're going to do to them. You're going to do way far worse than, than what my plan for them was. Mine was to scatter them and have them subservient. But now what you've taken it to another place. Therefore, it's a setup. And you're going to get judged for how you treated them. For I will bless those that bless them and I will curse those who curse them. All right. So then I want to go down to the ninth verse, and it says, On this account he had aforetime no mercy on his own sons, on his own disobedient children, but afflicted them. And remember, we're going to be afflicted here in this country for 100 years. Not only this country, but the islands as well, and every place else where they dropped us off for slaves along this North and South Americas, islands, and wherever else we were taken including those Arab, a lot of Arab states. Don't forget them. They're going to suffer too. And they're suffering now in great, great, great abundance. Great suffering. And, and these aren't things we wish on people. These are just things that are happening and we're just telling you about it. Because we know who's behind it. 
All right. So, nine. On this account, he had a four time no mercy on his own sons, but afflicted them as his enemies because they sinned. Then, there, then therefore, were they chas chastened. Why were they chastened? Why were we chasing Yehudis? Why were we chastened, yes, Israelites? We were chastened that we might be sanctified. We come to ourself, repent, believe on Yahusha's name, be born again, fill with the spirit, the Ruach, and live for him. It can get so bad, there's nowhere to look when you get so far down but up. But y'all had to chastise us. Still to this day, many of us are stiff-necked people, full of arrogance and pride for what? Eleventh verse, but now ye peoples and nations, he's serving a, serving a notice to the nations. Ye are guilty because you have trodden down the earth. You have polluted it. You have taken every advantage of it. And now you're destroying it. And use the creation unrighteously. You use the creation unrighteously. You dug into things, DNAs, cyber ops, cloning, test tube babies, and all the rest of it. Abortions. Evil and wickedness does more than a personal sin. It destroys the foundation. It destroys the reason that the earth was put here for Yah's people. We're not to be destroyed. But you're destroying with your polluted mind and polluted air and polluted waterways and polluted everything. You know, you're taking the world Y'all, you all in charge, you have taken us to the brink of destruction. Now you're going to pay for it. Don't blame weather. Blame your greed, your inhumanity, your atrocious acts. That's what you blame. Your sin. But let's go on. It's 12. For I have always benefited you. Yeah, you could brag and say, look, we, we're the ones who have the benefits, so we must be the ones that are being blessed. Ha, ha, ha on you. You know, we walk on you. You're not much worth of anything. But let me tell you something. There was a reason that he blessed you with things. Because he was using you to chastise his own people, but now you've taken, you've taken too many liberties. It's your time to pay now. If I were you, I'd repent. Because it's still, it's not too late. And ye have always been ungrateful. You, ain't, you, you, you hear people saying, oh, I just looked out on this and looked out on that. <laughs> I'm smart. I, we're more intelligent. That's why we have all this going on. Our people know how to handle business. Our people are intelligent. This blah, 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 blah. But you've always been ungrateful for what you have. Always been ungrateful for your benefits. You have Thanksgiving Day and don't you ain't thank what are you thankful for? Oh, I'm thanking my mom, I'm thanking my dad, I'm thankful that I have a job, I'm thankful, thankful. But you're never thankful. When you're thankful to Yah. Plus we we don't celebrate Thanksgiving anyway. We don't have to because Yah's people are thanks thankful always. We're always praying. We pray, we're thankful. We don't need one day to celebrate with the wicked world a day called Thanksgiving when they slaughtered our Indian brothers and sisters like like I don't even know how to say it because they treat dogs better. And that's what Thanksgiving's about, you know. Look it up. The death walk of our, our red-blooded, our red brothers and sisters. And a lot of them, don't be surprised, were Yehudis. 
Uh, yeah, yes, we're lights anyway, I know. All right, let's move on. Go down to 14th chapter. And I answered and said, Lo, you have shown me the method of the times, and that which shall after these things. And you have said unto me that the retribution, put a line under there. Yah says, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith Yahuwah. That's why we don't need to stand out on the corners and start spitting out verbal abuses to people. That is, it's not about that. Either you have a Yah that can fight for himself and you too, or you don't and do like the, the other uh, 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 is, Islam and Muslims that want to feel like they, it's not all of them, but those who feel like they want to fight for their God. You can't even fight for yourself, let alone for your God. That's something you need to think about. He can fight for himself. Your, your, your best thing is to get under his wing <laughs> for protection. Which has been spoken of by you. So this retribution which has been spoken of by you shall come upon the nations. Do you hear this? Retribution is being passed out like a deck of cards right now to the nations. How many you want? How many you want? I don't know what game that is. It's poker. <laughs> I don't play poker, never have. Don't even know how to play poker. But anyway, but I know they be putting them cards out there and them chips. <laughs> I've seen it, too. I've seen them on television. Now, you have to remember that when somebody is down, you're not supposed to put your foot on their neck. But you did that to y'all's people. Yes, you did. And now it's going to come back. And we're going to put our foot on your neck. I didn't say it. My father said it. All right. Listen to this. Verse 2, chapter 14, second Baruch. And now I know that those who have sinned are many, and they have lived in prosperity. You know, everybody hollering about prosperity. It ain't all it's cracked up to be. It depends on who's the one prospering you. Because you know that devil, he got a few riches around here himself to prosper you with. He offered it to you, Usha. <laughs> Listen to this. And departed from the world, left here, died. But that few nations will be left in those times to whom those words shall be said, which you did say. For what advantage is there in this? Or what evil worse than what we have seen befall us? What can be worse that you can do to these nations for what has been done to us? That's the question Baruch is asking. Because I haven't seen it this bad ever. Thousands were slaughtered under Roman army, under the command of the emperor of Rome. Thousands, thousands. And many escaped for their lives into Africa, south, east coast, Negro land, and took on many of the religious practices of that land, by the way. He said, we do it. We go off to foreign gods. Didn't he say it? Don't think that. We didn't. Doing it today. Worshiping Borgia as J.C., it's not him. He said, don't make any image of me. I, and that includes black ones. Y'all need to stop doing that. You can describe him in scripture, and if you can't get a picture of it, the Holy Spirit didn't give you one. Don't worry about it. But you don't need to justify a lie with a, with a, with a, 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 a breaking a command of Yah. I got to show you a black Jesus. That's wrong. Both of them's wrong. Listen to this. Are we to expect to see? Are we going to expect something worse for these people that we've seen or experienced already? And I'm going to drop down. You can finish reading that. I got to go down to the seventh verse. And if others did evil, it was due to Zion, that on account of the works of those who wrought good works, she should be forgiven and should not 
be overwhelmed on account of the works of those who wrought unrighteousness. Don't get tw twisted out of shape. <laughs> Y'all are yet in control. But who, O oh Yahuwah, will comprehend or understand your judgment? He's so awesome. Or who will underline this in your words, search out the profoundness of your way. With your people being judged in such a way, taken off the scene, as it were, all right, taken out of, of Zion, run out of, of, of Jerusalem. With all of this taking place, Baruch is asking a question. He's saying, who Oh, Yahuwah. <laughs> Romans, go to Romans 10. If you go to Romans 10, 10 with me. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. This is a big book, you know. You will find. Do, do. Come on, Romans. Where is you? Um. Well, I know the scripture, but still, I'd like to read it to you. Let's keep it on the up and up. Uh, Romans. Oh, there it is. Let's go to Romans 10. 10th chapter. Okay. Um, he says, do, do, do. Number uh, verse 14, 10, 14, where it says, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? All right, now if you come back with me, back to, to Baruch. You'll see that same principle here that we're reading to you about. It's great to underline this eighth verse of the 14th chapter of 2nd Baruch in your Bibles or your Sefer. It says, but who, O Yahuwah, will comprehend your judgment? Who will understand? Because, see, it's not given to the nations to understand the ways of Yahuwah. It's given to his people. Yes, the Yeshualites, Yehudis, to understand his pre precepts. All right? So he says, now you're going to take the people away because of their stiff-neckedness and disobedience, but now who's going to be left to who's going to fill up the vacancy? Because he's saying here, who can search out his, uh, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the fondness of his way? Who can who be able to do that now? He says, or who will think out the weight of, of your path? Who will understand your, 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 your principles and your plans and, and your uh, desires, for, not desires, your plans for this earth, for the people of the earth, for your own people first? Who going to be able to, to get into your, to your ways except those that you have trained as your children, those who have come from you? That's what he's saying. And he says in ninth verse, or who will be able to think out your incomprehensible counsel? When you talk, who will understand what you're saying? Because they don't have the background understanding of the law. They don't understand your precepts. They don't understand anything about you. So who is going to explain you to them? If all your people are chastised to, to oblivion. He goes on to say this, and then we'll stop here. He says, or who of those that are born has ever found the beginning or end of your wisdom? This is something that has to be done on a constant basis because you never get to the, to the end of the wisdom of Yah, but someone has to continue searching for it. And as they keep searching, they find it and keep going and find more and so on and so forth. But who is going to have that heart and that mind to do it? Your people were set to do that. So who is going to spread the knowledge of Yah throughout the earth now that the people of Yah have been dispersed? 
throughout the earth in judgment. Tenth verse, for we have all been made like a breath. <sighs> Nothing. Nothing to go. <sighs> Gone. And we'll stop there. How will they know, is what he's saying, without your people? And that goes for today. You know, we have so many Edomites trying to preach Yah's word without any rec recognition of who the true Israelites are, any knowledge of it, what the word is. You know, you, your Udis, are so very valuable. Within the kingdom, it is us who decipher what Yah is talking about. We know his counsel because it's the Ruach who gives it to us as a part, again, of his heritage to his people. It is us to offer the sacrifice of praise. You don't see voices like ours anywhere else on the face of this earth. You don't find musicians. You don't find athletes. You don't find anybody. You might find some athletes. But the worship part, hands down. Because that was what we were formed for. The Levites and the Davidic, Davidic uh, uh, worship kept music going 24-7. We are music-based people because y'all put a, a harp in our hearts. So don't you forget that. And we're going to finish the series off on number four coming up. Please go back if you haven't done it. Listen to one, two. And thank you for tuning in to this particular teaching. And we're going to uh, culminate it on the very next one. Don't go far. We'll be right back. Until then, go with Yahusha. Why? If you'll go with him, he'll go with you. Shalom. <laughs>